We live in a world of technology. In fact, just by show of hands, how many of y'all in 2024 have bought a new phone, TV, or computer? Anybody? The good news about if you bought a phone, a TV, or a computer this year is it's already out of date, right? By the time you unpack it, get everything downloaded, set up, ready to go, you go, wow, this one's already on sale because three new models have come out. Because we live in this technologically advanced world where everything is rapidly changing and improving and things go out of style very quickly. This sermon series that we're starting this morning is something that is timeless. In fact, it goes throughout all generations. It will never go out of date, out of style. It will never grow old. And it'll never be, be superimposed by something that is more technologically advanced. It will never take a back seat. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul gives 58 verses on one topic. And it is maybe the most crucial topic in all of Scripture. Because the hinge in which our Christianity swings is on the resurrection. We do every July something called Christmas in July. It's through the uh, Operation Christmas Child where we pack up shoe boxes with certain things and we send them all over the world to be Christmas presents come December. And they go to underprivileged countries all over the world. Christmas in July is a cool thing unless you're watching Hallmark Channel because that's also Christmas in July. Christmas in July is great, but how about Easter in July? Because oftentimes we give a lot of emphasis on the resurrection come Easter, but then some churches just put the resurrection, the gospel, the message, the new life that we have aside, but not here. In fact, we're going to really focus the next eight weeks on this tremendous chapter that is on the resurrection. If you have your Bibles open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I want us to understand the introduction, the first eight verses to this chapter. Paul had talked to a church that he started, the church in Corinth, which was really right in the middle of the Roman Empire, the Greek culture. The church in Corinth was a lot like modern day Houston. In a hub, it was a port city, lots of international flair, lots of influences from all over the world, lots of opportunities for sin. And Paul had been writing for 14 chapters on all of the issues that this church had been with. And then he saves till the end of the book this exclamation point to give 58 verses on the crucial aspect for these, these Corinthians and for us in modern day to really base our life upon. Read with me verse 1 of chapter 15. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast to the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. This introduction to the resurrection introduces a special delivery. It is a message delivered by a delivery man to a recipient. And it is a very special delivery. It is the gospel. If I point, I simply want you to say the gospel. I don't believe people, I was pointing here, but it's in the round. Help me out. The gospel. It is about, the special delivery is the gospel. We need to understand that what Paul is presenting is the gospel. And so we're going to look at this delivery man. And we're going to look at the recipient, and we're going to look at the special delivery, which is the gospel. And the gospel is simply what God has done for mankind in and through Jesus Christ. The gospel is the gift of God, this special delivery that is the foundation of Christianity. It is the foundation to life on earth. It is the foundation to eternal life. It is 
the gospel. The gospel is key to us understanding, but I, I want us to understand that there is a delivery man, a recipient, and a, a special delivery. We see this in verse 1. It says, now I, and this is Paul, he is the delivery man. Make known to you, this is the church in Corinth, the gospel. This is the special delivery, okay, which I preach to you, which also you receive. Now, when we th- talk about Paul, I want you to understand that Paul did three things. He preached, he delivered, and he received. Now, the preaching was just presenting the good news. We understand from the book of Acts that Paul started the church in Corinth. He was a missionary. He went there. There, were, there was really no church through his preaching and presenting the gospel. He started the church in Corinth. Now, after staying there and getting it established, he went on to his journey, his missionary journeys, and he left. And he writes this letter as he's hearing stories about the Corinthians and what they're doing and what they're facing, how they're living, and how they need encouragement. But we look at this and we see that, that Paul says that I preached to you what, what you received, which you also stand. That you've, and then he says right here that I preached to you. And he says, delivered that you also received what I also received. This is, this is key right here, the fact that he received it. We need to understand that he's delivering and preaching a message that he received. He wanted them to know that he was not the originator of this message. That it was not Paul's message. That it is God's message. That it is based on scripture, according to the scriptures. That it was something that did not originate with him. In fact, he came to the game a little bit later than the other apostles. He was first persecuting Christians. He was first putting them in prison and putting them to death. And then he came to know Jesus and he began to preach. He began to deliver the message. He was the delivery man that was the preacher of the gospel. We, in the 21st century, are called not to create the message but to take God's message, to take what? The gospel. And deliver that to everyone around us. The gospel is the hope that the world needs. It is the answer to all of life's issues. It is the source of strength, the source of hope, the source of peace, and the source of life for everyone, all 7 billion plus people on earth. And Paul says, I was, the, I was the one that delivered it to you. I was the one that preached it to you. I also received it. And just as I received it, I preached it. If you never dream of becoming a preacher, it doesn't mean that you're not called to deliver the good news of what Christ has done for mankind. We are all called to be the delivery men, delivery women, to, to deliver the gospel to a dying needing world. This world needs you to deliver. This world needs you to take that message of what God has done for mankind in and through Christ to your neighbor, to your coworker, to your family member. We are called to be deliverers. And we are called to be ambassadors to take that good news of Jesus Christ in this world and allow it to do whatever God can do with that powerful message. He was the delivery man. And he preached, he delivered, and he received. Now let's look at the recipients. The recipients, I make known to you, this is the Corinthians. The what? The gospel right there. Which I preach to you, the recipients, which also you received, then you stand. This is what they did. They received it. And they stand in it. The first two things they do is they receive it. First of all, the gospel is a present. The gospel is a a, a package that must be received. It is something that you must look at, understand, and open up. If the UPS guy drops a package on your front door and you ignore it for months and months and months, you never receive the benefits of whatever is in that package. If the gospel is presented to you, Someone explains to you that you're a sinner, that there's nothing you can do to earn your salvation, that that you've blown it in the past, you've blown it today, and you're going to blow it in the future, that everything that we do falls short to God's perfect standard. 
and you understand that the only bridge between a sinful mankind, that's you and me, and a holy God is Jesus Christ. That is the package, that is the, the special delivery, that is the gospel. Wake up. It is the gospel. And, and if you are presented that in a special delivery, unless you receive it, Scripture says unless you believe it in your heart, you receive it as your own, that you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you receive the benefit of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That benefit is abundant life here on earth. It's eternal life with God forever. It is peace. It is purpose. It is life with God. It is being called a son or a daughter of God most high the king. That is that special delivery. But, but what the Corinthians did is they received it. Paul presented to a bunch of people in this, in this Roman town this message of hope and truth and life. And he says they first received it. Second thing they did is they stood on it. In which you also stand. That is in the present tense. It's not simply, simply something you did years ago. It is something you are building your life on right now. The gospel is strong. The gospel is stable. The gospel is worth building your life upon. This is the foundation of who we are, the foundation of how we think, the foundation of how we talk, the foundation of every relationship we're in. You build your life on the gospel. I, every day, wake up and say, I'm going to build my life, my today, on the gospel that is the truth of what God has done for mankind in and through Jesus Christ. That is something that is a daily progress, a daily effort. When you wake up, you go, today, I'm building my life, my decisions, my interactions, my thoughts, my life on the gospel. The gospel, there's two, first two things, you received it, you stand in it, which you were also saved, which you also hold fast to the word, you hold fast. Two more things, first of all, you're saved. It's an interesting verb tense right there, it's, it's really something, it's in the passive, meaning that you didn't do it yourself, that God had to do it. You didn't save yourself, that is the unique aspect of Christianity, that we as sinful mankind, undeserving of any love or forgiveness or grace from our heavenly Father, that God reaches down from heaven and rescues us from the self-destruction and the pit that is ourselves. That we are saved by God through faith in Jesus Christ, through trusting him. That is something God did, but we get the benefits we get the fact that we have the security and the comfort and the, and the understanding that when I die and I take my final breath here on this earth, that I will spend an eternity with God forever. That is the truth of the gospel. That is being saved. That is what we get to experience and benefit when we receive the gospel. We don't not only build a life on it, but we rest secure in our eternal life found in God. We are rescued and saved. And then the final thing is that you hold fast. The continual, this is the hold fast, unless you believed in vain. He throws that in there, unless you believed in vain. Doesn't mean that someone who knows Christ, who has trusted Christ, who understands the gospel, who has been rescued by God through his saving grace. That they lose their salvation. It means that someone with a false foundation of who Christ is. Says, you know what, maybe I said a prayer, maybe, maybe years ago I was baptized or maybe I walked forward at a camp, but there was really no holding fast to what the gospel means for my life. There was no fruit or evidence in my life of life change. And he says, so part of this gospel is us holding fast to the truth that is found in God's word the truth that is found based on who Jesus is and the truth that is found based on what Christ has done for us. 
It did not simply rescue you at a camp 20 years ago. If you hold fast to the truth found in God's word, it is radically changing you day by day. It is radically changing me from who I was into who God wants me to be. That's if you hold fast to what? To the gospel. That is the the recipient. It was the Corinthians, but truly it is our message. It is our hope. It is our salvation if we are the recipients. Paul says in verse one, he says, I'm writing to you, brethren, which means not only this term of endearment, meaning my brothers and sisters, my close personal friends, but it means those who have received Jesus, who are following him and growing in him, who have seen life change. Those are the recipients, not simply the people in Corinth, but the people in Cyprus, Texas, the people who have received the salvation that is found in the gospel, the recipients. And when we receive that, it changes us. It rescues us. It gives us the assurance and the hope and the peace that we need if we are the recipients. Now, when we think about delivery, Think about our world in 2024. I mean, post-COVID, it started a little bit before COVID, but really COVID accelerated this delivery craze. Used to, 10 years ago, if you wanted something delivered to your house, you had one option, it was pizza, or you could wait for weeks for the the postal service to deliver something. Now, I kind of get frustrated if it's gonna be two days, right? Two days, I mean, I really want it there tonight. By five, between five and 10, I wanna wake up in the morning and see my package on the front door. That special delivery, we live in a world of delivery. Used to be pizza, now you can have a can of corn delivered to your house, you just have to pay for it, right? And then there's a ridiculous amount that you have to pay for a Happy Meal to be delivered to your house, all right? But we live in this delivery world. We live in this world that when you come home, it's not a surprise to see a package on your front porch. In fact. Oftentimes, we're shocked when there's not a package on the front door if you're a family like ours. So when you think about the special delivery, the recipients, I want us to understand that the special delivery is the gospel. It is the delivery that is given to every person that hears what Christ has done for them on the cross. Now, Paul, before he gets into this great chapter on the resurrection... He wants to lay the foundation of what the gospel is. Because the gospel without a resurrection is just a death. The resurrection without the gospel is just a miraculous act. Really, those two things, they have to be together in order for them to work. The, The gospel cannot be the gospel. It cannot bring salvation without the resurrection. And this this resurrection, in order for us to understand, we have to back up and know the entire story of the gospel. And he gives that to us. He says, by which you are saved, that the world I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I, this is Paul, I delivered to you as of first importance. That means that this delivery is a special delivery. It means that this is so valuable, so important, that we need to pay attention. What I also received, that Christ... This is, this is where it gets into it. Christ died, that's step one, for our sins according to the scriptures. The Old Testament, there's proof, this is it, that he, Christ, was buried, that's step two. That Christ was raised, that's step three. And that according to the scriptures, again, he's fulfilling, he's fulfilling the prophecies, that Christ appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve that Christ appeared to more than 500, some have fallen asleep, that Christ appeared to James, and then finally, that he also, that Christ appeared to me also. Here are the steps that Paul says, let's back up before we get to the resurrection, and let me present the, the rest of the story, the beginning, the prequel. And really, he leaves off the fact that Jesus was born of a virgin, co-equal to God, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, Jesus was there. And he was with God and he was God. That Christ stepped down from heaven, took the form of an infant, lived a perfect life, sinless life. He died a death that you and I deserve. 
and he didn't. He was dead and buried, and on the third day, one miraculous breath changed everything. And that if you want proof, especially the the church in Corinth, in the midst of this Greek culture that did not believe in the resurrection, you want proof? Paul said, I'll give you the proof. Not only was this predicted in, in the prophecies according to the scriptures, but after the resurrection, he appeared to the Peter, he appeared to the apostles, he appeared to more than 500 people. A few of those have died. That was a, a, an epiphany right there, okay? <laughs> Y'all had a thought and the lights just, man, that was <laughs> mind-blowing. That, that, that he appeared to more than 500. Some have died. That's what fell, falling asleep means. But most of them are here. Go ask him and go ask her and go ask him. They saw the resurrected Jesus. That's how we know it's true. That's how we can base our life on it. That's how we know that we can live out a life based on the resurrected Jesus. That's why we know Jesus is different than all other religious leaders. Because he died, but didn't stay that way. Because in that moment when he breathed, when the the grave clothes came off, when the stone was rolled away, and that he walked out of the tomb victorious, by the power of the resurrection, that changed history. Has it changed you? Because that is the delivery. He didn't do it simply to change the world, to change history, to change governments, and, and to see everything change. He did it to change the individual. He did it because he knew that we were lost, that we could not earn our way to heaven that we could not experience life with God forever without the bridge. That is the gospel. And Paul says there's proof because it is truth. It is proof and you can base your life on this one truth. That Jesus Christ came. He lived a perfect life. He was crucified. He was buried and dead and on the third day, he was, he was resurrected by the power of God. And you know what? He appeared to so many people, you cannot refute that fact. In fact, so many of those people that preached messages that always included the resurrection, they died proclaiming the truth of the resurrection. If it wasn't true, they wouldn't have been burned at the stake or stabbed or crucified upside down, dying with the, holding on to the truth that the resurrection was fact and truth. That is the special delivery. That is the special delivery to the church in Corinth 2,000 years ago and 2,000 years later. It is the special delivery that our world desperately needs to hear and desperately needs to receive. Is it the special delivery that you need to hear and that you need to receive? It does a few things. First of all, what it is, we talked about it. It is the fact that Christ died, buried, and raised again, and that he appeared. It says four times, appeared to so many different people. But what does that gospel do? What it does is, first of all, you receive it. It is a gift. It is a gift that the moment that you try to earn it, it is no longer a gift given by grace and mercy. It is a gift for you to receive. It is a gift that is specially gift wrapped for you. It is a gift with your name on it. That salvation, that new life, that hope and peace found in Christ and Christ alone is a gift. You have to receive it. Second thing you do is you stand on it. Why? Because it's reliable. You stand on it. You base your life on it. The world's going to refute it. The world's going to question you. The world's going to persecute you. And you stand firmly on the truth that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You stand firm on the truth that is found in this word. You stand firmly on the fact that Christ has given you life and he's given you purpose and he's given you peace. But when you experience the resurrection in your own life, when you stand on the gospel, this is what happens. The power that raised Jesus from the dead, 
the power that gave him that breath, the power that allowed him to stand and walk out of that tomb, that very power lives in you. And that's how you can stand. In the midst of a culture who's gonna try to knock you down, in the midst of an enemy who's gonna try to rob you of all the joy and the peace and the purpose that God has for you. When we trust God and when we receive this gift, we have the power of the gospel living in us. We have the power of God, the very power that raised Jesus from the dead, living in us and through us so that we can stand on the reliable message of the gospel. And then the final thing, it saves you. It is powerful enough for you to stand. It is powerful enough to get you from this, the land of the dying, this world that has to deal with with so much mess, so many frustrations, so much hurt and pain and sorrow. And that, that it's so powerful that not only does the gospel give you life abundant here on earth, but it gives us life eternal with God forever and ever. That is a powerful message that is found only in the gospel. It is a powerful package, gift, delivery that is meant for you to receive, to open, and to enjoy. It never goes old, never goes out of date, never runs out of batteries. The power that it had 2,000 years ago is the same power, life-transforming power that we have and experience today. It is an amazing gift offered to everyone who receives. Not simply from Paul to the church in Corinth, but from me and God's word to you today. There is a gift, it's offered, and it's free, but it costs you everything. It's free and it changes everything. It's free and it will give you life abundant and life eternal. Will you receive it? Father, 